yesterday you sailed across Cook Strait, but today you're going to travel overland and it's all about trains. So at the moment you're in train control. And this is Colin, who is in charge of the northern section of train control. Train control, what happens here, Colin? Here in the train control centre, we pretty much control the movements of all trains on the tracks that run anywhere from Bluff in the South Island through to Oteria in the North Island. So we make sure the trains are running on time, we make sure that they're safe, and we make sure that everything's as it should be. Right. So you have you have special permission this morning to be here in train control, looking behind the scenes. So the whole of New Zealand's trains are controlled from here. How do you actually know where trains are on the lines? We have a number of different systems with that. So the first one is we use signalling panels, so the actual trains interact with the rails and they will show the exact location of where the train is. So when we have a look at the so when we have a look at the train moving along the tracks, you can see the red dots move along from place to place. That is the train interacting with the network itself so that we can tell where it is. We also use a GPS system, which is called Jeevas, which will also give us a location of exactly what track the train is on, exact um, longitude, latitude, what speed it's doing, and that links through to the information on the train's weight and length um, in there as well. So you, you know where your trains are. Can you track them? Yes, yep, yep, we can. So we use um, a graphing system, which is used by the train controller, and that's his plan. And as the train moves along, we can actually see see it physically move along. If we don't, then we're in radio contact with the train, and the locomotive engineer will have certain points that he reports in, and we can then track its exact location and its progress. So if it starts to run late, we know. If it's running early, it knows. And if we want to divert it onto another track, then we can do that as well. So it must be much more reliable than in the old days when you didn't have GPS. But what happens, say, if the technology doesn't work? If we do experience a failure with it, there is a manual process that we fall back to, so there's a number of safety checks with that. So if our signalling system goes down or we lose connectivity for a while, the paper graph will tell us exactly where the train is because we've been tracking it, and then we go through a number of safeguards that allow us to verbally authorise the train to continue through. Mm, and next you're going to have a look at some of the other applications of technology that are used to try and keep trains that much safer, which will be good for you this afternoon when you go on a train. Hey, thanks, Colin. No worries. Speeding over rails along the western coast of our continent comes a bright portent of future transportation. For this luxurious new creation of science, replete with remarkable innovations, is truly the train of tomorrow. Twin diesels, each with a thousand horsepower, generate a speed of over 100 miles an hour. Ultra modern in design is every blue and silver car. Each has unique side sway reducers, making it the world's easiest riding train. This oval-shaped glass-enclosed lounge replaces the old-fashioned observation car. With its soft lights, rich carpeting and comfortable chairs, it resembles a tastefully appointed club room. A circular staircase leads to the glass penthouse on the roof. Intercar telephone service is provided. And with its new antenna, radio phone calls can be made from the moving train to nearly any place on Earth. Well, everything's okay in Glockamara, so up for a bird's-eye view of the countryside. The engineer has equally amazing gadgets. This searchlight is remarkably animated. In fact, several are provided for varying weather conditions, directed where needed, or wigwagged for signals. Starting no longer knocks passengers out of seats, thanks to new type roller bearings and shock absorbers. 
With the new Astrodome atop each car, customers have unobstructed views, protected by special laminated safety glass, tinted to reduce glare. 24 can be comfortably seated in each penthouse. Adjustable footrests of new design are a minor feature of the train. This cocktail room is part of the observation lounge. On one of the dining car's several levels is this all-electric kitchen, the first on any train. Ranges, refrigerators, dishwashers, and other scientific aids are operated by a power unit within the car. In the main dining room, tables for 24 are arranged for ample moving around space. And with the shock absorbers and side sway reducers, food remains in place on the table. A private dining room is provided on the lower deck. This luxurious research project on wheels is the forerunner of our trains of tomorrow. With such products of popular science, a new horizon opens for modern transportation by rail.